EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Mass. A moment ago, the pride of Massachusetts, the Patriots, introduced to this, as always, sold-out crowd as they get set to go head-to-head -head with the Cleveland Browns. Let's go, boys. They'll run for the first time with Johnson. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line to throw Mayfield it's caught by OBJ 19 yards to pick up there move the chains speaking of Odell Beckham he went over 100 yards in that loss to Seattle in week six 101 yards to be exact six catches second 100 yard game for him as a Cleveland Brown but people are waiting for him to find the end zone more just one touchdown catch through six weeks Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. And he's got the hook up to Landry. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 14 yards and it's a Cleveland first down. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, touch and time here, critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. So line of scrimmage still the 39 on second and 10. From the gun, a run for Johnson. And little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? On third down, Mayfield. And he will go down outside of the pocket for a sack. Tried to get away, but could not. Partner, the Mike linebacker, the middle linebacker, has so many different responsibilities. How excited do you think he was to get home with that blitz? Yeah, he wants a sack. He got it. On fourth down, the Browns hand things over to the veteran Britton Colquitt to punt. Back deep for New England, Julian Edelman. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. The 6-0 Patriots coming back out onto the field here, Charles, and that means that I want to play a game called who can give them their first loss, if anybody, because they have three of the next four on the road at the Jets, who look better with Sam Darnold back beating the Cowboys, and then they come home for the Browns. But anyways, you tell me who could give them their first loss. Well, they do have two very interesting road games after the Browns game at Baltimore and at Philadelphia, and you would think those would be the most difficult ones. I'm centering in on the Browns because they will be a very desperate team by the time that they play New England, plus the pass rush with Miles Garrett and crew. And that New England offensive line has had a share of struggles here in the early going despite being undefeated to date. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Throwing again. Brady. He finds Dorsett. It's complete. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. A gain of 13. It's a first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Again, zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. 
Well, there's no shortage of great young runners in the NFL, but don't forget about that guy, Sony Michelle. First round pick in 2018, almost hit 1,000 yards as a rookie, 931 to be exact, to go along with six scores for the former Georgia Bulldog. Here's White, and that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. But that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. 53, Mike, Mike. Hey, watch the slap, watch the slap. Watch the slap, watch the slap. Hey, hey. Now a play fake, Brady. And he'll have his man, that's Edelman. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 18 big yards on that one, and a New England first down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Brady now going to leave it with Michelle on the draw. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into go, enemy territory. Go, go. That goes as a gain of 11 and a Patriot first down. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 48-yard line. Brady now to throw. That's out to his running back, Michelle. That one good for 13 at a New England first down. I have no crystal ball up here. I can't truly see into the future. But if they don't start getting some pressure on him, make him move around a little bit and do something with the receivers, to, you know, change up their timing, they're going to get shredded as we've seen so far. Right now, they're off to a blazing start. Yeah, and you are right. He looks way too comfortable back there in the pocket. Yeah, there shouldn't be a pillow back there for him, all right? <laughs> if, as, as a defensive guy, they've got to dump him on his backside a few times, shake things up. Yeah, they're going to need an in-drive adjustment here on this first series. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. On second down, Michelle. And an alley to run. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. A gain of 13. It's a first down. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. Let's see what you got. Cover, cover! And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. On second down, Michelle. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. 11 yards there, first down. You were telling me this yesterday. This is exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation? We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the... And he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. A nine-yard touchdown grab. And they are able to strike first here on their opening drive. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose.
Goskowski now after the touchdown. He'll send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This Let's will be go, a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Brown's offense coming back onto the field here. We mentioned earlier their loss to Seattle in week six. Back-to-back -back losses now. And you think about it, Charles, at this point last season, the Browns actually had a better record than they do right now at two and four. Hard to believe. And remember what we said in preseason, that these Browns and their fans it's not the lovable Browns and, oh, we have low expectations. If we got to this point and they weren't playing well, might be a little bit up. And got his man complete. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Lawrence Guy able to bring him down. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Play fake, Mayfield. And he's got his man, that's Landry. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 23 yards on the play. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. An opening for Chubb on first down as he dashes forward for about seven. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. They stay on the ground. This time it's Johnson. And he's swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. Got he got it. maybe a you half yard it. at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. So third and two, this quite possibly four down territory, though, if they're stopped. Now Mayfield, he's got his tight end, David Njoku. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 30. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. Michael Bennett, the former Texas A&M Aggie, dropping the hammer. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Now a pass dumped off to his running back. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. The start of the second quarter, and it's the Browns in control of the football as they've got it with a third down and long coming up. And now they're looking for 19 yards here on third down following two negative plays. From the gun, Mayfield. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. 
A third down, he tried to stay in bounds, did all he could. He caught it, but was led a little bit too far. Yeah, and that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out, trying to catch the football. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. And this won't get there. Won't be online either. It's no good. Off to the right. And this score will stay right where it is. It was a kicker from that distance, 56, 57 yards. So many things you got to worry about. But I am a little surprised he didn't get it there. Yeah, with the way kickers are nowadays, we're surprised anything under 65 that it doesn't get at least to the crossbar. But remember this, you have to drive it a little bit lower in order yeah. to make that distance, and you also have to be worried about the interior rush that they can get their hands on it. So that's why those stronger kickers nowadays who can pop it up in the air and still travel and carry it, that's who you're looking for. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. They fake the handoff. Now Brady. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle, going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. And to the 49-yard line, but no further. And obviously, he is well short of the first. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. On fourth down on now is the lefty Ryan Allen to punt. Back deep for the Browns, Antonio Callaway. And out of bounds, sailed over. Looked like right near the pylon. This one's going to be perfect. Directional kicking at its finest right down at the one-yard line. Could not have thrown that out there any better. When the ball hit the ground, I thought it might go into the end zone the way it was angling, but perfectly jutting out at the one. You think maybe what we saw in practice came into play there? You know how he put those big cans down on the sideline and then angled for him and, and, and shot for him? Looks like it worked out pretty well for him, too. Had a bit of a lane there, took advantage of it. Give him seven there on the first down carry. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, both teams practice this situation, and this time the guys on offense won and in a very nice way. What a run from that position on their own goal line. Gave them some good breathing room. I wonder now, do you still stack the line of scrimmage or do you play normal defense? They may have backed them off with that run. It's a loss of two, now third down. Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating it. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, because they bring in your tight end, keep him in, your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line, the offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, w what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed, if there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. Edelman set to return. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And the Patriots take over. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. That'll be a New England first down, a gain of 12. Wait, set, fly, 20. Check, 53 is mine. I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. And Ozzie. Keeping it on the ground on first, Michelle. And the lane closes up quickly as he'll get about three down to the 38. 
What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. From the 38, Brady. And his throw is incomplete. Denzel Ward, pro bowler as a rookie, there to bat that one away. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past, the biggest teaching point. Get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Here's Brady to throw. Trying for Edelman again. This time he's got it. 17 yards there for the Patriots as they've got themselves a first down. Now how many times have we seen that? Third down and Tom Brady turning to old reliable Julian Edelman. Of course, no Rob Gronkowski now. Edelman the main holdover, the 33-year-old who was a Super Bowl MVP last season. Play action, now it's Brady. Nowhere to escape and he goes down. Larry Ogunjobi breaking through to get him to the ground. It's a loss of seven. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Now following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. This drive is turning to an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. I got you, son. I got you, son. Hey, check it. Throwing his Brady on third down. It's caught. This is White. And he's going to be stopped well short of what he needed as the tackle is made at the 18-yard line. Give him two yards on that play, and that'll bring up fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point, piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And still no points on the scoreboard. You're coming off of the three and out. They're just looking for anything to grab onto right now, aren't they? I'm wondering if someone's going to take charge in the huddle. You know, we always look, and look to the quarterback, but sometimes it's another player on the team, a star, a veteran, someone with some excitement and energy. It's like, all right, guys, let's shake things up and let's go because they still have an opportunity to make things happen. Shake it off. A throwing to start the drive, but that went incomplete. He was looking for Odell Beckham that time, and now it's second down. Now with that incompletion, let's do something different. I'm going to go through a few teams that are on losing streaks, and you tell me if there's reason for concern there. Let's start with the Cowboys. Definitely reason for concern. Not as dominant on defense as they should be in offensive line injuries. Three straight losses there, three and three. How about the Chiefs? Two straight home losses. Yeah, they just can't stop anyone running the football. Okay, and then the Rams, three straight losses for them. Yeah, definite reason for concern because they cannot get the running game figured out. Todd Gurley not touching it enough, but Kenny. And then the Browns. Everyone was so high on them before the season started. What about now? So many expectations. 
that's part of the problem they have right now, but they still would be contenders in their division. Quickly back to the Chiefs, though. Are you concerned about them? They're still a real contender here, aren't still they? Still a contender, but I'm concerned as heck on defense for anyone who wants to be committed to running the football. And a nice gain of 21 yards. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. Yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. And he's going to be hit and taken down. Back right around the 48-yard line. Dante Hightower coming in for the sack from his linebacker spot. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. He's got a man wide open. It's Landry. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. A very well-executed play. It goes for 29 yards. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 all the way down at the 21-yard line. Mayfield on play action. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. The positioning here is key. As a defensive back, you're taught 99% of the time make a play on the football. But in this case, making a play on the man was all the difference. That's what forced the incompletion. From the 21, it's second and 10. Here's Mayfield. And the catch made by Johnson. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Give him seven on the play, and that'll make it third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. The Browns on third down. They've hit four of seven. Here it's third and three. Mayfield to throw it. He's got Njoku, his big tight end. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, like hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. The kick by Joseph is good, and they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. So he gets a shot at atoning for the earlier miss here in the first half and able to knock it through. And what a relief for him, don't you think? Because how many games have we done where kickers missed one early and never gotten a chance to atone for it the rest of the game? That's a lot to carry around. Joseph now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns it'll be a Patriot first down on a pickup of 16 
One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Working from the gun, it's Brady. He throws, and he hits the slant route to Thomas. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. That one good for 13 at a New England first down. Thomas, the nine-year vet. Of course, all those great seasons with Denver. Five straight 1,000-yard campaigns in Denver. Dealt to Houston at the trade deadline last year and now trying to work his way back off an Achilles tear. And if healthy, he can certainly be a big asset for Tom Brady. He takes this for about six down inside the 40. The last run got six, now second and four. It's our field. It's our field. Hey, reload. Now Brady. Caught by the tight end, Watson. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns 28. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. He's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. Brady. Incomplete. Well, partner, so much for the mismatch. How about the guy at the second level, that big linebacker, able to run with the receiver and make a play on the football? After the incompletion here now, third and two. Brady to throw again. He's got him in. Complete. It's Julian Edelman. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Brady's got his guys first and 10, and he's five for six now throwing the ball on this drive. Again, they'll throw with Brady. This is White on the screen. White's got a first down and more, and he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. A 16-yard touchdown. And the Patriots, they add on to their lead. And that'll give them a two-score lead here, but I'm looking ahead. They just want to hold it for the final moments here of the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, it almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and tear it into the second half. Extra point good by Goskowski. And the lead is now 17-3. Goskowski now after the touchdown. He'll send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Let's go, the Browns Let's go. offense trotting back onto the field. And you're under a minute to go in the half, a first half that hasn't been particularly kind to you. How do you think they'll play this? Well, I think the smart approach is to run out the clock, lick your wounds at the half, and see if you can come up with a strategy to play better in the second. But... It's also something to challenging your offense right here. You know, hey guys, you help dig this hole. See if you can get us out of it a little bit before the half runs out. Let's go make some plays. Pressure comes and down goes Baker Mayfield. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts 
As the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong. Now Mayfield lost the football. Now the Patriots will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. Let's get this. Let's get this. After the sack, they'll come up now third and long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the ball here just to try and get some space. And indeed, that's what they'll do as they run it here. And they will get to him behind the line, but the clock continues to tick down. The Patriots will take their third and final timeout as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. Here's Britton Colquitt now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he's able to get it out of there. And this is a pretty good kick. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. Less than 30 seconds to go in the half. Pretty good starting field position, all things considered. You'd think they definitely have time to get into field goal range. Yes, and you get into the huddle or you come off the bench here and you've called multiple plays because you're going to say, this is how we're going to run a middle order, guys. You don't have time for audibles. You don't have time to change anything. You're trying to get the ball in position to at least get three. They've got a great shot to do it right here. That goes as a gain of 11 and a Patriot first down. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Watch the curve. Watch the curve. Oh, 50. The final shot before half for Brady. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Now a pass dropped off here for James White. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. It's a first down on a gain of 10. With James White, you know that he can catch the football. He was third in the NFL amongst running backs last year with 87 catches. And as we've seen, sometimes they come in bunches. Super Bowl 51, he had 14 grabs, including the winning score. Last year in the divisional round versus the Chargers, 15 receptions for White. Brady to his tight end, Lacoste. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. And partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. On second down, they'll run with White. And an alley to run. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 11 yards there, first down. 
They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 46. Throwing now is Brady. Looking for Edelman, and he hits him. It's complete. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. That'll be a New England first down, a gain of 12. The former seventh-round pick, Julian Edelman, just continues to have such a productive career. And has made himself into a receiver. Remember, he was a college quarterback, and not just a productive one, a very good one. At Kent State, right? Yes, a great leader, a guy who could make plays with his feet and his arm. Got to the NFL and had to convert into being a receiver and was drafted that way. And that conversion, oh boy, it's been good. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case. And that play got bottled up. Now on second and 13, Brady. And he's got Edelman on the out route. That's complete. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. And finding Edelman underneath, that's a recipe for success. Typical route for a good slot receiver, and Edelman's one of the best in the game. Knows how to go inside what one of my college coaches used to call the briar patch. Got to go in there where it's tough and make those tough catches. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. In for the sack, Miles Garrett. I remember when I was a kid and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain. And guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, allowed for the sacks. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel so, oh. I, could pay the, so I could pay the proper okay, price. Okay, how much were they? A dime? <laughs> what were they? Uh, 15 cents. So it's an empty possession and as a kicker, not the way you want to start your day's work. <laughs> and now each team's missed a field goal here so far, Brandon. So apparently... Neither guy is immune. So the missed 56 yarder, and now the flip side. Good starting field position at the 46 near midfield. First down, Mayfield. It's caught by OBJ. That throw good for four. It's second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Watch the twist, watch the twist. Kill, kill, kill. Mayfield now from the 50. Got an open man. That's David Njoku, the tight end. Let's go. Let's go. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. Let's bring it. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it. Indeed, here come the flags. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. The penalty moves him into the red zone here on first and 10. Following the penalty, Chubb. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15, a gain of three. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. On second and seven, Mayfield. And he's got the hook up to Landry. 12 yards there and a first down. Let's go, baby. They'll send Beckham alone to the left side. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. 
Mayfield now feeling the pressure here and taken down. A sack back you at the seven. Dante Hightower able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Now from the seven, here's second and goal. A run for Nick Chubb. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Now Mayfield on third and goal, and that is incomplete. So now fourth and goal, you're trailing by a decent amount here. What are you doing, Coach Davis? Well, I've got to think to myself, just how many more opportunities am I going to have this close and have this chance? I've got to go for it right here. The clock's dwindling on me. Let's go get it done. The kick by Joseph is good. And a second field goal here gets him back with an 11 now. It's 17-6. to six. So a good drive there to begin quarter number three, but they're only able to shave three points off the lead. Well, something's better than nothing, all right? They didn't play particularly well in the first half, but they definitely need him to step on the accelerator now and play a whole lot better. Joseph now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, come get a little bit closer yeah, this time. Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. They stay on the ground. This time it's Michelle. Sheldon Richardson there to make the play. The best defensive lineman. They play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Throwing is Brady on third down. And he will have a man, Demarius Thomas. A gain of 22. Let's go. He's come a long way since his time at Georgia Tech. What did he run at Tech? He ran hitches and, and go routes, essentially. Yeah. I mean, but he ran them really well. He averaged well over 20 yards a catch while he was there. And he still creates downfield in the NFL. That big body and that willingness to go catch the football. He's pretty impressive. And his friends call him Bebe, the nickname his uncle gave him back in the day. A battle for it here, and this will be caught. And he is brought down, but not before reaching the 30. Two chunk plays in a row. The last one was over 20 yards, and so is this one. I've got to make sure that I don't take Tom Brady's greatness for granted, that we make Shut it routine. Down. How about that throw right there? Yeah. Another, another great completion. And you know one area where he honed his throwing? He was a catcher in high school. He was actually drafted by the Expos in 1995 in the 18th round. Well, that would have been something to see him behind the dish. I think he gunned down a few guys. Gunned down a few guys trying to steal second. That would have been fun to watch third quarter and you've got the lead you're not ready to go into that four minute offense to close the game out 
but a running game can really benefit your team right now. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Here's Brady. He gets it to Thomas. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. They'll try and run for it. Here's Michelle. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. And the 13-year man puts it through. And that will get the lead up to 14. So chalk that down as an eight-play drive capped with a field goal. Yeah, as a friend of mine used to say, they were moving and grooving for a while, but they couldn't keep the momentum going enough to get a touchdown out of it. Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. This is taken at his four. Then he'll take this across the 25. Couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. He put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> <Toe -bashed. laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Super tall. <laughs> he continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. Hey, hey, hey. Oh On second and nine, Mayfield throwing middle, but it's incomplete. The veteran Jason McCourty there to make sure that one didn't find its target. And we just saw another example. These cornerbacks have played tight coverage all game long. Might start wanting to think about a few double, triple move routes to try and shake their guys free. Chris, they have, you're right, they have had no room to breathe. On third down, Mayfield. And that is incomplete. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. That'll be a New England first down, a gain of 12. That's Mike 53, Mike 53. Right here, right here. Ozzie. Now Ozzie. a first down carry, it's Michelle. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Yeah, baby. 
Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. On second down now, it's White. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Brady now to throw. Complete to Dorsan. And oh, he coughed it up. And this is picked up by the Browns. And they are going to set up shop at the 40-yard line. Partner, that one looked like it was over. I mean, they had control, had the football, and the defense had to make a play in order to keep them in the game. That's exactly what they did. And yeah, now that door ajar, two-score game. So hold on here, not down in the fourth. Here's Brady to throw. And he'll get that to Michelle, complete. No gain on the play there. It'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He can make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. Brady gives this to White. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. On third down, Michelle. And he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Patriot first down. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. On first and 10, here's Brady. That's caught. It's Thomas. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first Here down. Here we go. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. And what can they do here on second and goal? Three red zone trips so far have yielded two touchdowns and a field goal. Now Brady, they'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid gain. Second and goal from inside the five. Now Brady. Now that's going to be caught for a Patriot touchdown. Benjamin Watson, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Patriots, they add on to their lead. They had the lead in the fourth, but still passing. Finding the big target for the touchdown. Now that lead grows even more. Everybody gets to join in the fun. You know, it doesn't have to just be the wide receivers catching touchdown passes. The tight end doesn't just have to do just the dirty work inside. He gets a chance to get into the end zone as well. Goskowski, the extra point, and the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. Goskowski now after the touchdown he'll send this one away 
That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And the Browns getting set to go. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He was looking to get it to Jarvis Landry that time. But it'll be six. Second down, another incompletion. You know, it's a wonder he's still moving around back there the number of times he's been sacked. Yeah, he's staying out there, isn't he? And you don't think about it much in a game like this, but he's showing incredible leadership. Still competing, still fighting, not taking himself out of a ball game that appears lost. On second and ten, Mayfield, and he gets it to his running back, Nick Chubb. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. So the face mask, quite a blessing there as they'll start out of harm's way with a first and ten. Mayfield to throw it. Dumps this to his running back, Chubb. Five yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Now Mayfield. To the right side, and he's got Landry complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots 33. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch. But you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Mayfield with it once more. He gets this one to Johnson. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. Good route, good pickup for first down yardage, and that is a tough one to cover. The angle route, because a running back getting out of the backfield, if you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot and you're seeing this play develop, he heads out towards the flat first, and that often gets you to overcommit running in that direction. Then he cuts back up inside you into the middle of the field. That's what we just saw there for a nice pickup. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are gonna get a first down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity, usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. And Joku pulls this one in. He's got it for a Cleveland touchdown. David Njoku. There to make the grab. And the Browns get a score closer. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals before this one they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. Joseph now to kick this one away. This one fielded at the five. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. 
And the Patriots gearing up to go now. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Throwing on first down is Brady. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. First quarter, Charles, you really emphasized the importance of winning the turnover battle as a visiting team, as an underdog. They haven't forced a single turnover in this game. And right now they're losing, so no turnovers might lead to no victory. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Brady gives to Michelle. Nowhere to go that time. Might have gotten a yard up to the 25. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. Wait, New England on third down. Like, Five out of nine thus far. This is third and nine. Shotgun now for Brady. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Demarius Randall that time there to knock it free. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Allen on the punt as he gets this one away. Now Callaway on the return. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the Browns will take over, first and 10. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Mayfield, and that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Baker Mayfield, as a rookie, three times he led the Browns back to victory in the fourth quarter. What can he do here in year number two? A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe he didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch as the arm there, the legs still there. This has been a tough game. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. It's caught by OBJ. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Then we got to give a little tip of the cap for the defense there. Zone coverage, locked it in tight, made it really difficult because they tried to cross and route against it, and it worked for a completion, but you have to know where the sticks are on third down. Didn't get beyond them. No pickup. They'll run for it. Chubb. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. If he writes a book in the offseason, he ought to title it Undaunted because where he is on the field, back on his own side, and goes for it and gets it, I got to give it to him on that one. Yeah, only thing you can justify it with is it was only a few inches that they needed. If it's fourth and two, probably doesn't do it. Hey, he got it. Give him credit. Yeah, but if they don't pick it up, you're giving, in trouble. Yeah, they're giving points <laughs> to the other team at that stage. That's a gain of four as we slip inside of four minutes left in regulation. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Here's Mayfield. He's got Njoku, his big tight end. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 41-yard line. But correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. 
A first down throw for Mayfield. It's caught. Beckham. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. I know he felt that one. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Going to the air again with Mayfield. And this is incomplete. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield. And that will be incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decide to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Mayfield to throw for it on fourth. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Patriots' defense is going to take over on downs. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, Slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none. Yes, exactly right. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Hey, go 66. They begin with Michelle on the ground, and they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And a few kneel downs should come very close to finishing this one off, depending on whether or not we see any defensive timeouts. They still have two, but using them would just be prolonging what's really already been decided. They'll run with Michelle. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Let's Not totally ready. home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Now Michelle. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Wait, set. Wait, 20. Check 53 is left. Keep it up, defense. Keep it up, guys. Full 50. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, it won't help them at contract time. Only two there on the dump off. Easy it's third work. down. It's easy work and it's coming again. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Third and 11. And some extra depth in the secondary here. They're in the dime. Brady will take a knee here, and that should just about do it. So this will wind up a victory for the New England Patriots. And you look back over the score sheet, interesting. A very clean game, no turnovers by either side. An absolute rarity when we watch games now because defenses have put such an emphasis on taking the ball away. 
Well, what we saw here was offense is spending their time saying, look, you know they're coming for it. Ball security is paramount. So they worked on that, not just a week of practice, but I'm sure all during training camp. Make sure when you have it, tuck it away because danger lurks everywhere you turn. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Patriots winners here at home as we say so long from Foxborough.